Welcome to Living Life. Do you remember when you were young uh, and your parents would give you all these rules and they would say, you can't go here, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you would say, it's, oh wow, it's taking away all my fun, I cannot even enjoy myself. But what you realize is later on, especially as you get older and you, as you have your own children, you realize that it wasn't to stop your fun, but it was to protect you from yourself. It really was a means of allowing you to enjoy yourself even more than you could because of these rules and these regulations. They were not meant to stop you, but they were meant to enhance your joy. In the same way as we go through this particular lesson today, you will see that the Israelites uh, had laws and decrees that they were to follow. God was not trying to prevent them from living, but he was trying to protect them, create a people unto himself so that they would enjoy their time in the land and enjoy him as God. So let's take a look at the passage and see what it says. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 through 14. Now Israel, hear the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully, for this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations, who will hear about all these decrees and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to Him? And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb when he said to me, Assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire. You heard the sound of words but saw no form. There was only a voice. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments which he commanded you to follow, and then wrote them on two stone tablets. And the Lord directed me at that time to teach you the decrees and laws you are to follow in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Welcome back to Living Life. Let's set the scene here, uh, where these Israelites are. These Israelites are just about to cross over into the Promised Land. This is the younger generation. Remember in Numbers 13, where the spies scouted out the land that God, this promised land that God said he was going to give to his people, and they came back, these spies came back, but 10 of those spies uh, had a bad report about the land. Only two, Caleb and Joshua, had a good report and said that we can take the land even though there were people living in the land. Because of their unbelief and because they did not believe that they could take possession of the land, God had the generation, that generation, basically for 40 years walk through the desert take laps over and over until they actually died out. And all that was left was this younger generation that now was set 
to cross over into the promised land. And Moses is teaching them. He's teaching and reminding them about what God has done for his people, but he's also telling them about the laws and decrees of God that they should follow. And he challenges them to obey those laws once they come into the land. Now, this is interesting uh, because now Moses is uh, retelling the story. So Deuteronomy actually is uh, literally is called the second law um, because of the fact that this is a time where the law and the things of God is being repeated again, but to this, essentially to this younger generation uh, before they go into the land so they know exactly what to do uh, for God. Now, Moses first recommended to them, but more than that, he challenged them and he said to them, hear the Lord, always hear the Lord. But what does that word hear mean? What it means is to listen and to obey. Oftentimes we think we say, uh, did you hear? We think of this audible, did I hear something audibly? But the word hear literally means to listen attentively and obey it. So even Jesus used in the New Testament, he says, oh, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside. And Jesus said, who are my mother and brothers? Those who hear the word of God and put it into practice or obey it. So this is the Jewish definition of hearing. This is the definition uh, that is intended for God's people when the Lord says hear. Now, not only does he challenge them on that, but he, he says to them, remember the incident in Baal uh, Peor when the Moabite women and the Israelite men engaged in sexual immorality and then God sent a plague upon the people at that time? 24,000 people died until God relented and God stopped the plague after Phinehas, who's the grandson of Aaron, actually uh, honors God by, by slaying two people who flaunted their sin in front of Moses in the leadership at the tent of the meeting. He reminds us that, of that incident to, so that they might focus on God's arousing God's anger. But in addition to that, he challenges them to be morally and spiritually unique from the other nations. As a matter of fact, he says, the other nations, you will be an envy to the other nations. They will see you, and they will see how you're obeying your God, and they will, they will actually exalt God to say his decrees are righteous. In addition to that, not only will they do that, but they will say that the Israelite people have wisdom and understanding because of how they obey God. Now, this is, this is really interesting, because many times we think, well, what are the other people thinking? What do other people think of us? What well, God is saying as Christians and as this, as this Israelite nation is that you're the envy of the world. When you're obeying God, people see that, and they also see how close you are to God, and they realize your relationship with God. And they, finally, he says he wants them to remember what they have seen. And he wants them to teach their children. He wants them to teach their grandchildren what they have seen and heard from God, so that when they go into the land, the entire family, even the generations as they go into the land, it will go well with them when they are in the land. So this call is a call to obedience. It is a challenge to be obedient to God when in the land. So being, uh, being in the land and things going well in the land does not depend on military strength. It did not depend on anything other than obedience to God. And that's one thing that we have to remember. In this life, it's not about how wise we think we are. It's not about how strong we think we are or how powerful or how influential. At the end of the day, it comes down to our obedience to God. And finally, he also wanted to say to these people, remember to always revere God, to give God reverence and to give him all in the land. So as the people were going through this particular time, they are being taught to revere God. They are being taught to obey God so that it might go well with them in the land. And in the same way, as we obey God, it will go well with us in this life.
Is it going well with you right now in this life as a believer? All of this can be tied back to our obedience to God. With our obedience, on the other side of obedience is a blessing. Not necessarily a physical blessing, but it is a blessing even in our relationship to God. It's a blessing maybe to our family. So it can be a natural spiritual blessing. But most of the time, and probably all the time, if it's not going well, it's related back to our disobedience of God. But today, all of that can change as we come before him. So let's have a word of prayer right now. Father, we just thank you right now for your goodness. We thank you for your redeeming heart. We thank you that you are God of second chances, Father, and that we can come before you right now and we can have a brand new start. No matter where we are, no matter what we've done, we can begin anew and afresh today. It's in your precious, wonderful name. We love Jesus in his name. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the listeners. 